too far. So what we tend to see there when someone goes too far, yeah, either they'll cross over here, but it will often throw their, their balance out a bit. Hi, Brenton here. Welcome to Feedback Friday. If you're new to these videos, this is where we analyze someone's stroke and we look at what they could do to swim faster. So in today's video, we're looking at an athlete who sent their video into us. Now, one of the first things I like to look at is the breathing. If you find that you are tiring very quickly and you feel like it's hard to make 50 or 100 meters, one of the things that can cause that is the breathing. So when we look under the water, we want to see a light exhale through the nose. And then as they turn their head to breathe through here, we want to see a big puff of air out through the nose. So you can see this gradual exhalation, which is good. There's not a big exhalation as he's turning his head to breathe. So he might be able to be a bit more assertive with that exhale, a bigger puff of air while he's turning his head. That might help him clear his lungs. But overall, I think he's probably swimming quite comfortably. So it's not a big concern. The next thing that I like to look at is often the body position. So if we look from the side here, you can see that the head is at the top of the water. This is good. We would like to get the hips and the heels a little bit higher. There seems to be a bit of a drop through there. And one of the best things that you can do for your stroke is minimize drag. That's really got to be number one priority because if your legs and your hips are dropping down, if you're creating a lot of extra drag, that is going to slow you down. And it takes too much energy to overcome that drag. And you can see here that his overall body position, not all the time, but through some of it, is just a little bit too low. So he's going to be copying quite a bit of drag through here, and it's going to be very hard to overcome that with the amount of energy required to, to do so. So what uh, we look at there is, all right, well, what's causing the legs to drop? One of the first things we often look for there is head position. And I'm not a coach who suggests looking straight down for everyone. That is certainly not the case. And we work with a lot of triathletes and open water swimmers, and you actually find a lot of them look somewhat forwards in this sort of range. So I don't mind if he's looking somewhat forwards. To me, it seems as though at times he is probably a bit far out there, which could very likely be causing his hips and legs to drop. So with this swimmer, he may want to try and look a little bit further down. As I said, it doesn't need to be straight down, a little bit further down. But the cue that I like to, to think of here is extend or lengthen through the back of the neck. So if you feel like someone is here above you, you've got a piece of rope attached all the way through your neck, through your spine, and they're pulling that rope towards them. That's kind of how you want it to feel through your head. Keep it long through there. Uh, so by doing that, that might bring his hips and his legs up towards the surface and get horizontal in the water. That might fix that 100%. But sometimes there is other things as well that can, can be causing it. And my guess is the other maybe 50% of what's causing his lower half to drop is probably what's happening in the catch phase of the stroke. So once the arm's out in front, so from here through to about here, that's what we consider the, the catch phase of the stroke. Some coaches will talk about that as the, the press phase or the setup phase. So basically from there to there, if you're pressing down on the water too much, that will press the chest up nice and high, but it often has the effect of dropping the legs down. So if this swimmer can adjust or improve his, his catch and get himself in a position where he's not pressing down too much, he's just getting his hand and forearm in a way that's angled to press mostly back, that could also improve his body position there. So that's something that we, we'd like to look at. Now, if we look at the alignment from above, so this bird's eye view, you'll see that generally is pretty good. So this left hand enters really nicely. It's in line with his shoulder. He's extending straight forwards, and that's a good line through his body. You can see that there's not that much he could do to reduce the drag in that part of the stroke there. So that's really good. Right hand side, there's a little bit of a crossover going on. You can see, all right, that's where his shoulder is. That hand's crossed over a little bit. I don't mind coming close to center, but we generally want to just try and avoid crossing it. Uh, but it sets up pretty well there. It, to me, it's just on those breathing strokes that you can see it crosses over. So right here, the hand enters well. He's setting up well. But just as he goes to breathe, you'll notice that's where the hand comes across the body. And we also get the hips coming off to the side a bit there. So from a drag perspective, that's going to slow him down. And it's also probably just throwing his balance off a bit. What we probably want to look at here is you can see how his shoulders may be rotating too far which could be part of the reason why he's sort of crossing over there. So if we cut to the front view, we'll see here that on some of these breathing strokes, particularly to that left one, yeah, he might be rotating a little bit far. 
yeah, it might be rotating a little bit far. And the way we sort of determine that is I like to look at what's the angle through the shoulders at its furthest point of rotation. And what we often see with most elite swimmers, it's around the around sort of 40, 45 degrees, a bit more, a bit less, somewhere in that range though. About Think of it as like 45 degrees and that will set you up well. Here he's gone a, a bit too far, around that sort of 68 degrees, maybe a little bit less, um, which is a little bit too far. So what we tend to see there when someone goes too far, yeah, either they'll cross over here, but it will often throw their, their balance out a bit. So what I'd probably recommend for this swimmer to change that, to improve it, do a drill like the FKB drill, which is where you're basically kicking front on, and I'll play a video of it here. It's where you're kicking uh, face down in the water, got one arm out in front, one arm by the side, and all you're looking to do there is try and get your breath straight to the side while this arm stays out in front of you. So the FKB drill, which is short for front kick breathe, that can help you basically hold your line, keep that arm in line with your shoulder as you are getting the breath, and it can also help you just make sure that you're not over-rotating in that breathing stroke. So that would be one of the, uh, the probably the second thing we'd look to do. So the first thing, adjust the, the head position. Secondly, adjust the position that he's breathing in. So just keep that alignment when he's getting the breath. And then probably the third thing I'd, I'd really be sort of looking to do here, and this is all sort of one one major point, but it it would make probably the biggest difference in terms of the speed. Will be changing the or working on the catch in the pull. So the first thing we can see here is, yeah, he's got a nice entry. He's got the fingers going first. He's extending forwards well. And when he finishes reaching forwards, though, his hand is a bit deep. And this is with both arms. So what we tend to aim for here is we want the fingers below the wrist, wrist below the elbow. You've probably heard me talk about that a bit before. We want that position. And if your hand goes down too deep after you finish reaching forwards, so let's say it goes here, again, it's just going to be more drag. The other thing that happens there is you miss out on the first 10, 15 centimeters of the setup phase or the catch phase there. So it just means it's a little bit harder to get a good catch there. It's probably a bit more obvious on this left-hand side too. So the left hand, yep, entering well, extending forwards. And when he finishes reaching forwards, just a bit too deep. So if he kept his hand up about 10, 15 centimeters higher and he had just a very slight downwards angle with the arm there, from a drag perspective, much more effective from setting up the catch, much more effective as well. So what we could do there, a really simple drill, one that we love to do in clinics, one that we do at camps, and, and I give to a lot of the swimmers when they join our online coaching, one of the first things that we'll often you know, have to do is just make sure that they're starting their catch in that right position. So the front kick drill, which is you kicking face down in the water with both hands out in front of you, that is a great drill just to work on getting the right depth of the hands. And the thing with pretty much everything out in front of you, the... Uh, the what you feel is is right if you feel like you're doing it right you may not be so you often have to sort of just look forwards check your position and if it's incorrect make that change so our our sense of uh, awareness out here is often very skewed so just uh, it can be very good to check those things either by looking at it by filming yourself just one of those things to um to know exactly where you are out in front there so we'd look to, to get that starting catch position right then after that We'd really just want to work on the catch and the pull. So, in uh, one of our one of the videos that I think is probably best for most people to to see if they're thinking about working on their catch and their and their pull is our uh, is our video which talks about the four key positions in the catch and pull. And I'll link to that below. That'll be in the description. Uh, and have a look at that video if you haven't seen it yet. So look at that afterwards. But basically, what we what we talk about there is with all the swimmers that we've worked with, with the thousands of swimmers that I've personally coached and, and done analysis with. With the really good ones, there's pretty much four key positions that you want to move through in the catch and the pull, so through this here. The first one is the start of the catch, which is what we just looked at, fingers below wrist, wrist below elbow. Second position is the end of the catch, which we sort of call the high elbow position. Um, now, have a look at that video to sort of explain that more, but when you finish the catch, we basically just want to get the hand and the forearm angled back in that direction there. The third position that we like to sort of move through is the power diamond. So when we're looking side on, and I credit Annie Jones to this, is we want to see your shoulder, elbow, and hand roughly aligned underneath the shoulder there. That means it's a lot more surface area pressing back in that direction compared to if that hand is too far out in front. So you can see that that's where it's pressing. We want to try and really just get everything lining up pretty much underneath the shoulder there. Uh, and then the exit, we want it to exit just past the, the hip in most cases there. So he's doing a pretty reasonable job 
exiting here. So if we look at from the, uh, at the front view um, with the catch here, with the uh, with the sort of power diamond position, which is that third one, if we measure that as an angle, we want to see the angle is 100 to 120. Now you can see that angle is correct. It's 116 degrees. But the thing is, he's dropping his elbow quite a bit when we look from the side. So if you are either being filmed or you're looking at footage of yourself, that angle of 100 to 120 that we want as the hand's about to pass under, make sure that you've got the um, the side position right. So shoulder, elbow, and hand aligned because this can be quite uh, deceptive there because you can have the right angle, but you can still be dropping the elbow. One of the other things that I've come to find over the last couple of years and, and working with people is when you're trying to get, say, a high elbow catch, for example, if you try and overdo it or you try and go too shallow with the catch and if you're aiming to, you know, thinking of a high elbow is, is up close to the surface at all, that's going to throw you off. So it's going to make it a lot harder to get a, a good catch. So what I'd recommend here for, for this swimmer when we're looking from the side is you can see on this right-hand side, okay, he's coming through. Now from here through to there, you can see it's a very dropped elbow position, as in if we were to draw a line from his shoulder to his hand, that elbow is well below that line. So we, that's what we consider dropping the elbow. And obviously the forearm is pressing mostly down there. If we can get his forearm and hand in a more effective position there to be pressing back, it's going to help him a lot. But what he's, more, yeah, what he's going to have to do here is go a little bit deeper with his hand from here to here. So see how it's just it's too shallow, too shallow through there. So right now it's moving in that sort of position. So if he was to get, let's say, a high elbow catch uh, right here, it's going to be a pretty uncomfortable position for that shoulder to be in. He's probably going to have to be somewhere like, like that in order to get a high elbow catch just because of the depth of the hand. Whereas if he was able to go a little bit deeper with the hand, Let's say his hand was down another five, uh, maybe five to ten centimeters lower. He'd be able to get this sort of more comfortable, oops, more comfortable catch position there, where it wouldn't need to be as extreme. And by extreme, I mean he wouldn't need to have his elbow really far forwards there. So we want to try and make that that catch position or that high elbow catch position uh, very comfortable, very sustainable. Um, but if you're too shallow, it's it's too hard to do, and it's nearly always going to cause you to. to drop the elbow there. So he'd need to go deeper with that right-hand side. And on this left-hand side, that one has a much better depth, much better depth. We'd really just want to work on pointing those fingertips downwards a little bit more. See how they're facing forwards a little bit too long through here. So he's really sort of pressing down in that phase of the stroke. We just want to work on just improving that, getting the fingers pointing down more, and obviously getting to a slightly more effective position there. Now, how would we go about it? What we teach now in clinics, what we teach now online video membership uh, and, and what we do at camps now is the YMCA drill progression. So you may have seen the YMCA drill that we've, uh, we've had in a number of other videos. That is a great drill to basically work on these four key positions. So that's that'd be the first drill. And then there's two other drills after that that we do at clinics and we have inside our video membership. So they're the, that's really the progression that I find can be most effective. And the reason for that is it keeps things really simple. And if you're trying to improve your swimming and you're trying to change a stroke, it's very hard. It's, I'd say it's, it's close to impossible for most adults to really improve their catch and their pull without breaking it down into smaller elements, without doing drills that help you refine and sort of give you the time and space to be able to make these changes here. Because if you're, try, if you're just swimming and you're trying to improve this stuff, it can be very, very difficult to do. So that's why we like to use drills. Love them or hate them. They're a really effective tool for learning some of this stuff, but they've got to be specific and they've got to just allay to change that muscle memory and develop the motor patterns that we're trying to, to establish there. So you don't need to do a lot of drills. You just want them to be specific and relevant to the things that you're trying to, to work on. Now, if you're not sure what you should be working on, then have a look at our five core principles of fast freestyle. That will give you the order of things to um, to work on. So with these five core principles, what we typically find there is if you follow that progression and the very first thing is, is breathing, you want to breathe deep and relax. If you follow that sort of process, for most people that is going to sort of tick all the boxes and help you develop in the right progression because there's no point trying to work on, there's no point trying to work on uh, say your, uh, your catch and pull if you can't make it more than 50 meters in the water. 
it's more than likely going to come down to your your breathing, might come down to your your legs or your balance in the water. So follow the right uh, order, and that's the best way to to improve. So have a look at the five core principles of fast freestyle. If you're wondering what order should I develop things, um, or work on things. The other uh, thing that cool question that, that I got asked this week was, what uh, if if I'm a coach, what can I do to uh, how can I learn to analyze people's stroke? And we've got this 10 minute video inside the video membership where I'm basically just, I'm, I talk about every single aspect of the stroke that we look for. So when we run clinics, we normally film from uh, four or five different angles. And uh, I, I point out all the things that, that we look for and all the correct things that you generally want to achieve there in those different angles. So if you, if you are a coach and you're wondering, all right, how, how could I do this stuff for my own swimmers? Have a look at that 10 minute video inside the, the video membership. Uh, and that is, that's basically how we, we break it down. So thanks very much for watching. If you are uh, not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And if you do enjoy the video, please share it with someone that you know is trying to improve their swimming. And I'll be back next week with another feedback Friday.